My name is Professor Leonard Funk. I'm a consultant shoulder and upper limb surgeon and uh, professor of orthopedics and sports medicine. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the glenoid labrum of the shoulder and injuries associated with it. So what is the labrum initially? The labrum is a structure that surrounds the socket of the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. So what you can see here is the left shoulder, the socket or the glenoid, is surrounded by this labrum which is like a washer that gives stability to the shoulder joint, to the socket of the joint. And here you see a close-up view showing you the labrum of the joint going all around the shoulder. Labral tears typically occur in young people following an injury, typically a sporting injury, or it may be an injury such as an accident or fall directly onto the shoulder. It can also occur following a wrenching injury, such as a pull on the arm. <clears throat> Labral tears are typically associated with dislocations of the shoulder or even partial dislocations known as subluxa subluxations of the shoulder. The typical feelings are that of the joint feeling unstable, clicking and clunking, and particularly pain from the joint. If we look at the labrum itself, you can see it's like a clock face. At the top, 12 o'clock, at the front, 3, bottom, 6 o'clock, and at the back, 9 o'clock positions. This is how we describe the different types of tears of the shoulder. So a tear that occurs from 3 to 6 o'clock is known as a bankart tear, and this is associated with dislocations that come out of the front of the shoulder. If you get a tear of the labrum at the top of the shoulder, that's known as a slap tear. This is the area where the biceps attaches into the shoulder. And this can occur with a throwing injury, falling onto the elbow, or a wrenching injury, pulling that biceps off the top of the shoulder, causing a slap tear. You can also get tears at the back of the shoulder, and these are known as posterior labral tears, running from about 12 o'clock to 9 o'clock. These occur with a dislocation or subluxation backwards of the shoulder joint. These we see sometimes with rugby players, and direct falls onto the shoulder or onto the outstretched hand, and the shoulder is knocked backwards. We can have a suspicion there's a labral tear from examining a patient and taking a good history. A good investigation for looking for tears of the labrum is known as an arthrogram, done as an MR arthrogram or a CT arthrogram. Here you see an image of an MR arthrogram with a slap tear right at the top here in this triangular area where you see some dye running up here. The arthrogram is a procedure where dye is injected into the shoulder and then images are taken of the shoulder on a CT or an MR scan. These scans are not 100% accurate and the best way to diagnose a labral tear is by keyhole surgery and that's an arthroscopy of the shoulder. This is generally a day case procedure uh, done by keyhole surgery where you can go home the same day. This is done under general anaesthetic or sometimes a regional anaesthetic where your arm is made numb. Here you see a typical picture that we see at arthroscopy of a superior labral tear or slap tear at the top of the shoulder. You can see the humeral head, which is the ball of the ball and socket joint, to my far right, and the tear is closer to me over here at the top of the glenoid labrum. For more information on labral injuries, please go to the website shoulderdoc.co.uk, have a look into the patient information section under shoulder and labral tears where you'll get more information or click on the link below.